Whether you crave crap, it's so good it should be illegal. Mm -hmm. Love luscious lobster. He's a wicked, wicked good. Mm. Set your heart on succulent shrimp. You're going to want to eat two of these. It's really good. Or favor fish in any form. Mm. Shut up. It's like an ice cream cone and a poor boy out of a The flavor is so good, I have to lick my fingers. <laughs> We're hooking you up. We love seafood! With the most succulent, savory, and spectacular seafood. The Jersey Shore may be known for beaches, bars, and boardwalks. But on the peninsula of Point Pleasant Beach, Fishing is a way of life. In the summertime, beach bums and fishermen alike kick back and get their claws on the crustacean catch of the day at Red's Lobster Pot. Us locals wait all year for the local summer, and there's no better spot than here. Great view, great food. The boat pulls right up and empties the lobsters out, and then chances are those are the ones that you're eating. Red's opened in 1988 by a lobster fisherman whose nickname is Red. Marissa and her partner took over in 2014. I think that New Jersey lobsters are the sweetest, most succulent lobsters that you can get anywhere on the East Coast. Our boats come in and unload 300 pounds all the way up to 1,800 pounds every time they come in and deliver here to Reds. Those bugs go from the boat to a bath in the tank room, a 30-foot trailer where circulating seawater keeps them happy. Well, that and Marissa. They call me the lobster whisperer because when I'm sorting late at night, sometimes they hear me talking to them outside. After a short stay in the tank, they go to the steamers. We steam our lobsters because we need to steam a lot of lobsters at one time. We sell a lot of lobsters, over 2,500 pounds a week. It all goes to a good place, like Red's Lobster Roll. We took all the lobster, we chopped it up coarsely. We have a lot of tail, a lot of claw, and we're going to add a lot of mayonnaise. Greg mixes his mayo with lemon juice and hot sauce, celery hearts, chives, and a house-made spice mixture. We need to fold this gently so we don't break up all the lobster meat. Hey, Greg. How much can you fit in that buttery toasted bun? Ah, let me add a little bit more. That looks awesome. This is the best lobster roll on the Jersey Shore. I had lobster rolls before, but I think this has to be the best one I've ever had. It's full of lobster, and the lobster is fresh, and that's what I love. It tastes really great. The chives and the mayo, it's just enough. The toasted bun is also just amazing. It adds a little crunch. It tasted like I just shelled it myself. Very fresh and very tasty. In contrast to the cool creaminess of the lobster roll, Greg turns up the heat with one of Red's signature dishes, the Angry Lobster. What makes the Angry Lobster so angry is that we cook it in a super hot pan and there's a lot of spice. Pieces of lobster go into seasoned flour and a saute pan. We break up the lobster into eight pieces so the customers can easily get the meat out. The lobster can be angry, but we don't want angry customers. Now we're going to put it into a 350 degree oven for 10 minutes so the meat is all the way cooked through. By now, the lobster is pretty annoyed. But what makes it really angry is a splash of sauce with olive oil, garlic, basil, and red pepper. This just gives our angry lobster a spicy punch. Don't get hangry. There's plenty of angry lobster to go around. When the angry lobster came to the table, it was more than I thought I could handle. It has a real kick to it. Spicy, but the seasoning was awesome. The angry lobster is spicy and full of flavor like meat. It's delicious. You didn't have to dip it in butter because it was filled with flavor. It's great. I really get into it, so that's why I get it all over the place. The flavor is so good, I have to lick my fingers. I bet even the shell would taste great. No, you don't eat the shell, but I mean, you could if you wanted to. <laughs> if it's crustaceans you crave, Red's is your one-stop shop. Any way you could think of a lobster, we'll prepare it for you. But there's one thing you won't find on Red's menu, a frozen confection. People ask us all the time why we don't serve ice cream, because we don't have freezers. You can't bake fresh. Take that, Maine. I'm going out for lobster again tonight. You might even be back here again. <laughs> the Jersey Shore isn't the only place you can enjoy sun, sand, and seafood. They're a winning combination on the West Coast as well, in the beautiful beach city of San Diego.
Zoras trapes along the Embarcadero, which means landing place. And almost every day, some of the most spectacular seafood on the planet lands at the Embarcadero's double-decker pescatarian palace, the fish market. They print the menus twice a day because that's how fresh the fish is. That's how often things are changing. The market's two restaurants and retail counter offer the freshest and finest seafood in Southern California. And guiding every fish on its journey from pier to plate is Darren Gorski. I'm the fishmonger. The fishmonger is a person that loves to sell fish. It's just one of those things I always had a passion for. Fun fact about fishmongers, they've got ninja knife skills. I just love cutting fish. It takes a lot of practice. Perfect. It's a tradition on the docks that no one goes home hungry. That's the spirit behind one of the fish market's biggest crowd pleasers, the seafood stew called chipino. Chipino means chip in. In the late 1800s, the fishermen would help other fishermen that didn't catch fish that day. They would walk around with a pot and ask the other fishermen for a little bit of help so they can make a chipino. Good chipino starts with a great marinara sauce. Our marinara sauce starts with olive oil and fresh vegetables. Onions, diced celery, chili peppers. If you want a little spice in it for the chili peppers, I make the marinara sauce have a little kick to it. He gives that kick a chaser with a splash of red wine. It makes it a little bit heartier, uh, richer flavor. Do you like wine? Do I? I used to. <laughs> we'll save it for the seafood. Herbs, salt, and Worcestershire sauce add layers of flavor. Okay, once this is all cooked down, we're going to add our tomato paste and our diced tomatoes. And a drink of water. Like beer pitchers. <laughs> then he sends the seafood for a swim. We have green lip mussels, we have black mussels, and we have cockles, and we have vanilla clams. We want to steam the shellfish in the marinara sauce, and this is going to take about maybe a minute, minute and a half. Now, the other part is white sea bass prawns, sea scallops, and we have squid. Then we have a Dungeness crab. I mean, this is just a beautiful dish, hearty dish. And now we're going to add our garlic butter, and we're going to add our garlic puree. And I'm telling you, look at that. Oh, my god. Here's our chipino. A seafood lover would cry over this. Maybe it's all the garlic? All right, you guys. Here is your chipino. I've never had chipino before, and when it came to the table, I think we were all just blown away. Oh, look at that. We just kept finding, like, little discoveries in there, treasures. The sauce is really great. The sauce is probably what makes the whole dish. They must have an Italian mother somewhere <laughs> cooking all this sauce for the food because it's fantastic. If you're not craving chipino, Darren goes back to basics with his garlic prawns. Just garlic, shrimp, and a few drinks. And we're going to start with an in-house fish market chardonnay. We booze it up a lot in our garlic prawns, so it takes a little bit more flavor, gives it a little more kick, and it has a little bit more sweetness. He adds garlic butter, pureed garlic, and meaty Mexican prawns. So now we make our sauce, which we add the garlic butter. That's a lot of butter. But it's OK. He washes it down with another drink or two. Put a little brandy in there and a little bit of sherry in there. <laughs> like a craft cocktail on a plate, he lays down linguine, then the poached prawns. Now for the sauce or the prawns. These prawns are so good, you're going to want to eat two of these. obsessed with garlic, so this is one of my favorite dishes. I mean, it's garlic and butter and shrimp and pasta. You can't really go wrong. It's delicious. The prawns are really tender. They're perfectly cooked. They're beautifully seasoned. I'm so glad I ordered it. It's delicious. I love it. It's so garlicky. It's really good. <laughs> if you're in San Diego, come to the San Diego Fish Market. The views are great, the food is great, the service is great. I mean, what more can you ask for? Ah, living the dream. The dream. I don't know what that was. The dream of fish. The fish. Yeah. That'll work. 
Seafood lovers shack up in Savannah. Mm, mm, mm. That is delicious. With a dish built for two. It's like Thanksgiving. That's supposed to be once a year. If you need a vacation, try our three-step rat race recovery plan. Sunshine, Southern hospitality, and seafood. Mm. You can find all three in Savannah, where the best seafood is served in a shack. The Savannah Seafood Shack. Love the David and Christine Cutlip got the idea for the shack on their honeymoon in Thailand. So we actually went to every dive, every hole in the wall, because we wanted to get the full local experience, is see the table, which was spectacular. It was really neat, great. And that's what we try to, to do here at Savannah Seafood Shack. They already had the inside scoop on the Savannah seafood scene. My parents own Cooler Seafood, where they sell fresh shrimp, crab, fish. And they're keeping family in the business. Christine's dad is the chef. Between families and friends, we actually own 80% of the seafood market in Savannah. After their honeymoon, they found the perfect spot for their new venture and a new arrival. This location popped up and jumped on it right away. Probably wasn't the best time to quote unquote jump on it. I was eight months pregnant at the time. That's what helped inspire the name of one of their top sellers, the Love Shack. Everything will be cooked in this boiling water and we're gonna have to add a little spice for something nice, okay? We will use two different types of season. This season is used to cook it, and then we have a different season to sprinkle on. Like a southern seafood boil, the Love Shack starts with corn and potatoes. Crab, shack, and clams. And since this is the south, crawfish. I do the shrimp last because it cooks very fast. They boil alone, so each one is perfectly done. But this is the Love Shack, so once they're hot, they get all cozy in a garlic butter bath. Everybody loves garlic butter. We're just going to drown it the way it is. A spoonful of that special second seasoning and a squirt of lemon go into the bag. And then he gives the shack a shake. There's one more thing missing here, the snow crab. Here it is, the Love Shack. By the time you finish, you'll be in love. And we have the love shack. It's like Thanksgiving. That's supposed to be once a year, but I've got it right now. So good. Fresh, great seasoning. That is delicious. Wow, that was impressive. Seasoning's great. It's good. Uh, crab looks are my favorite part. Mmm. Boy, that seasoning is so good. Now that melts in your mouth. Mm, mm, mm. Since this is the love shack, we may as well have a kiss. Thank you, lovey. <laughs> Along with love, the seafood shack also serves some surprises. Guys, what would I have for you guys? Yeah! So do you know what is this? No. Come on, kids. Everyone knows that there's nothing happier than a customer with a big cone full of seafood. Delicious. Savannah being a very mobile city, you walk with a seafood cone in one hand and a beer in the other hand. Now it makes perfect sense. Why have I never thought of that before? Like a good ice cream parlor, Timmy makes his cones from scratch. What's going in this cone? Clams? Crabs? Cuttlefish? Today we're actually going to fry oyster in a cone. So instead of saying I want some strawberry, you can say I want oyster. I don't think that would work anywhere but here. He covers them in salt and pepper seasoned flour and sends them swimming. The oysters are layered into the cone with house-made slaw. We want to make this the best oyster cone you guys are ever going to eat. Here's a seafood cone. It's actually better than ice cream because it doesn't melt. Well, sure. And because it's full of fried oysters. Oh, shut up. Well, the combination of flavors, textures, the combination of sweet and the coleslaw, it's delicious. This is awesome. Delicious. Well, get messy. It's like an ice cream cone and a po' boy at a fair. Mm. 
Now, who would have thought of putting that flavor together? Oysters. It's working. It's amazing. They have to get some more of it. This ain't the end. <laughs> no, it's not. Seafood lovers will be streaming to Savannah to shack up. We love Searching for succulent seafood in a shell? Time to get crabby. Just give me a crab and get out of my way. In Baltimore, you can double down. Where did I get myself into? With an incredible crustacean creation. My favorite part of this was the whole dang thing. We're gonna drop anchor in the city by the bay. No, not that one. Baltimore, where the nearby waters of the Chesapeake are full of crawly crabbies. And just a block from the docks is the castle of Baltimore Crab Shack's LP Steamers. There's no plates. You just eat right off the paper. And you have a hammer and a knife, and that's it. You just beat away, and it's fun. It's carnage. It's not posh. It's not ferns and brass. It's a little divey and messy, but who would want to go to a fancy crab shack? It's good food, good people, good cops. <laughs> it was started by William Garner. You can call him Bud. My uncle was named the same as me, and his nickname was Bud, so they nicknamed me Bud. After a career working on the waterfront, he was hungry for some old-time crab. And I was looking to open a seafood place. And I looked all around, and this was the only place I could afford. <laughs> His grandson, Andy, and wife, Kim, run the restaurant now. I started working here when I was in high school, and uh, I've been working here on and off ever since. Steamed crabs with a sprinkle of spices are a Maryland mainstay, and LP steamers serve 7,000 a week. We season our crabs with black pepper, rock salt, and special seasoning. They go into a steamy sauna 36 at a time. We cook them for like 25 to 30 minutes. Take them out, and they're ready to go. You're coming to Baltimore, you got to get these crabs at LP Steamers. All right. Thank you. They're definitely the biggest and the juiciest. The spicing on it is perfect. It's a lot of fun to be able to just pick your own food with your hands. For me, Baltimore is that down basic kind of food, and like a steamed crab is that. Just give me a crab and get out of my way. The meat's really juicy. The spice is perfect. <laughs> I'd eat as many as they'd serve me. But what if crab, the way nature intended, isn't crabby enough for you? LP Steamers has the Franken-crab of your dreams. A crab cake stuffed into a whole hard-shell crab, covered in batter and deep-fried. The hard-fried crab. That's like stuffing a hamburger into a steak. I like it. Kim works from the inside out, starting with the crab cake filling. We use two different types of crab meat. The lump pretty much acts as a glue that holds everything together. And the colossal, it's just huge, big, sweet pieces of crab meat. Next, we have just plain breadcrumbs, parsley, because the color makes it pop. And then we have our special spices. To bind everything together, we use eggs, mayonnaise, mustard, and Worcestershire. Then Kim gets her claws on the crab meat. You want to get right in there with your hands, and you want to be a little gentle because you don't want to break up the big lumps that are in there. She forms crab baseballs, and every one is a home run. Now we are taking a whole crab cake, and we're stuffing it into a hard shell. You want to pack it in there good so it doesn't fall out. Then the whole thing gets basted in batter. The alien-looking Kravenstein goes for a swim in hot oil. And this is our take on a Baltimore classic, the hard-fried crab. I wouldn't want to meet that in a dark alley, unless I had a seafood fork and maybe some melted butter. I was like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> The crab cake was very good. It was a lot of big lump crab meat, some good spices. The combination of the seasoning was salty and the sweet crab meat was the perfect mix. I liked the batter. It was not overly sweet, and it complemented the crab and the salt. I was kind of surprised it was a full crab underneath. That was another, like, surprise inside, another gift. My favorite part of this was the whole dang thing. It looked amazing, and it tastes amazing. It's so good, it should be illegal. 
For the briny best Baltimore has to offer, LP Steamers is your port of call. Just don't plan on rushing through it. When you eat crabs, I think you have to devote a whole day because it is so messy. It's a Maryland experience and it's a lot of fun. We're taking the fun to the Gulf Coast. We're Texas tummies two step to tasty. Divine. Tiny. They're just fantastic. Shrimp. It has all the shrimp that you'd ever want. You'll think you've died and gone to seafood heaven. When it comes to Texas cooking, you usually think of red meat and Tex-Mex. But there's an island outpost in the Lone Star State where seafood reigns supreme. Galveston. Off the beaten path, away from both the beach and the bay, is an island institution that has spent more than 40 years wrangling big flavors from the smallest seafood, shrimp and stuff. We have the bull shrimp. We have the fried shrimp. If you didn't know where it was, you'd never find it. We have the shrimp pull boys. We have the shrimp gumbo. It has delicious shrimp and delicious stuff, shrimp and stuff. <laughs> we have the shrimp kisses. We have the stuffed shrimp. It is where the locals eat, so we get to meet friends that we don't normally get to see. I believe that's all the shrimps we have. And the seafood is caught right off of Galveston. Caught by a fleet of mosquitoes? The mosquito fleet is what our shrimp fleet is called. Because they look like mosquitoes when the nets are deployed. Jeff Antonelli ate at Shrimp and Stuff when he was a boy. Come on in. Or is that B-O-I? Born on the island, we call it B-O-I. And that means you and your family were born on Galveston Island. Born on the island! <laughs> to really eat like your B-O-I, there's only one dish you need to try. The shrimp gumbo. The gumbo is to die for. We haven't touched that recipe in 40 years. It starts with our roux, which is a vegetable oil and flour base that we cook down for about three hours. Roux's got that really nutty, almost peanut butter smell. And the neighbors know when we're cooking gumbo because the whole neighborhood smells like gumbo. Then we add our water. And we stir that in. Next, we'll add our celery, onions, and bell peppers, which we cut and cook down for about two hours. Jeff layers the flavor with Worcestershire sauce, chicken base, and seafood base. I'll add a few bay leaves, the cayenne pepper. Whoa, Jeff. You know that stuff's spicy, right? Yeah, yeah. I like a little bite to my gumbo. Next, some black pepper. As you can see, it's already thickening up, and we're building that flavor profile that's made our gumbo famous all along the Gulf Coast. Next up, filet, also known as ground sassafras. And that gumbo filet gives it that rich, earthy flavor. Many people say is the secret to all good gumbo. He follows the filet with garlic, thyme, tomatoes, and okra. No gumbo is complete without okra. Look at this beautiful, beautiful start. Yes, he said start. After simmering for an hour, the gumbo is finally ready for the main ingredients. So what is it, seafood gumbo? We're adding the seafood. Since you can never have too many shrimp, Jeff adds two kinds. These are Gulf shrimp, wild caught. They give it that wonderful, salty Gulf taste. Oh my God, they're just fantastic. And then we add the imitation crab. And we've been adding the imitation crab for 42 years, and we're not going to mess with a good thing. Oh, it just looks delicious. Now to finish it off, a little bit of rice, a few crackers, and of course, a spoon. And there you have it, our shrimp gumbo. You'll think you've died and gone to seafood heaven. Yeah, this gumbo is awesome. I come here when I'm too lazy to make it because I do a good one, but this one kind of puts mine to shame. They have an awesome move. Fresh ingredients. I mean, what else can you say? My absolute favorite part of the gumbo is the locally caught golf shrimp. It has all the shrimp that you'd ever want, and I really think it's probably the best on the island. The spices are just right, just right. It's almost like my grandmother used to make. With 40 years of history behind him, Jeff has a lot of ways to showcase shrimp. The shrimp tacos 
are the best on Galveston Island. He slathers local brown shrimp in seasoned cracker meal, egg wash, and crunchy panko breading. The panko makes it extra crunchy. We fire shrimp in soybean oil at about 350 degrees, drop them in for a few minutes until they're golden brown. He lays them on a tortilla with house-made pico de gallo, crunchy cabbage, and smoky chipotle sauce. And there you have it, the wonderful shrimp tacos. The locals crave that crunch. Divine. It is crunchy, tasty, and very appetizing. On a hot day in Galveston, it's very cool, it's very light, it's a little spicy. That's my favorite part. All right, now. The chipotle mayo really gives it a light smokiness. It just smooths everything over. Fresh out of the dough. Delicious. I know I got it all over my face, <laughs> but I'll lick it off in a minute. <laughs> Forget about cattle ranches and oil wells. For BOIs in this part of Texas, what you don't want to mess with is there seafood? But you're always welcome to come try it. People should come here, especially the tourists and the visitors, because they will really feel at home. It has the best atmosphere, and they would know that the moment they walk in that door. When you're searching for scrumptious seafood, hoist your sails and ride the wave to port. Land. Since 1989, the best seafood in town has come just one way, fry. Susan's Fish and Chips is a fantastic local spot that serves delicious seafood to locals and tourists alike. You can see the people that have caught the fish here. As you go around, you're able to see the history of Portland. We're three miles from downtown. This is a little bit more off the beaten path, but it's well worth the short drive. One of the first tourists I got in here, I said, you're from New York? How'd you find us? And they got lost. And just like home, at Susan's, you can always get your favorite fish. You catch it, clean it, bring it in, we'll cook it for you for five bucks. That is fresh haddock, yeah. right from Tasco Bay. But you don't have to hook it yourself. All of Susan's seafood is fresh and local. Hi, Pete. It's all for me. We have some nice fresh attic here, just cut an hour ago. Really nice. I know other fishermen. I know how hard they work. We can just all buy from each other and keep it going. Gotta go feed the people. Have a great day. You too. Susan sells every kind of seafood Maine has to offer, and she puts almost all of it into one dish, her ocean-sized seafood platter. This is Haddock that was last night slept in Casco Bay, which is right down the road. Along with fresh local scallops, it gets a dredge, a dunk, and a toss in her fry mix. I love this fry mix. It has everything in it, powdered milk, powdered eggs, whole wheat, all kinds of good stuff. Put it down till it's golden brown. <clears throat> Whole clams and baby shrimp get the same treatment. They cook at the same time, same temperature. She stacks all the seafood on a French fry foundation. Little things are so fresh, they just jump right out at you. And that is our seafood platter. Like the ocean's brought right to you. All the seafood you want. Excellent. He's addicted to seafood. <laughs> My favorite part of the platter is the scallops. I love scallops. Never seem to be able to get enough of them. Very fresh. Very good. I love fried seafood. Their fried clams are full of flavor. Same with a had it. Excellent. There's something for just about everyone in the seafood platter. But Susan's favorite catch gets its own show. My lobsters are here. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. I love lobsters baked. I love lobster stew. I love lobster fritters. I love lobster chowder. I love buttered lobster, cocktail sauce of lobster, lobster rolls with mayonnaise. Now I'm starving. Which way are you going to make them? Deep fried lobster tail on a stick. You're gonna make a lobster lollipop? It's tail time! I open them up and I clean out the tail, take the skewer, and it's so easy to do. We dip it in a little water, moisten it, 
the flour. Then we put the breading on it. Now it's time for the fry up. And we're gonna cook them very lightly so they're just a golden brown. This is only gonna take about a minute. They're good. They're so happy to be in there. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well, I couldn't help myself. These are wicked, wicked good. The best kale in town. You know you want one. <laughs> That's just awesome. Never had anything like it. Mm. What about that? After you dip it in the butter, it's just like, ooh la la. It's just like the best. <laughs> wow. It's awesome. It was delicious, rich, juicy. Mm. That is so good. I couldn't eat more than one. I'm sure some people could. Oh, just give me a chance. After more than 28 years, Susan still serves seafood herself, working seven days a week. Here's your lovely food. I love seafood. I love people. It's a good life. As long as there are fishermen bringing their catch to Portland, she'll be putting fresh fish into the fryer. In the Miami neighborhood of Little Havana, a fish tail isn't just a story. You see a tail on there. What is this? It's a sandwich. Really crispy, and inside is really soft. Delicious. One question, what about the scales? Some of the most succulent seafood dishes have a cultural component. For a taste of Caribbean cuisine, we're heading to the Great Floridian melting pot of Miami. In the Little Havana neighborhood, the rhythms of Cuban culture pulse like a strong mambo beat. Domino parks, bars with uh, Latin music, people think at all hours. Cuban coffee, Cuban people, and Cuban food. When Little Havana gets hungry for a taste of home, it hands for La Camaronera. La Camaronera means the shrimpery. My father and his brothers were fishermen in Cuba, fishermen here. They were able to open this in 1973 as a fish market and wholesale business. And then in 1976, we added a kitchen and just started serving up some of the same dishes we did back in Cuba. The food here is probably as good or better than the Cuban food I eat at home. You know, that's a secret you know, I'll keep to myself. La Camaronera has been a destination for decades, even as the neighborhood around it has changed. There's no longer just Cubans, it's Cubans, Hondurans, Venezuelans, Argentinians, Brazilians. But we're kind of like the Mecca of Latin and South America. Buenas tardes. Reflecting the neighborhood's cultural changes, one of the newest items on the menu is a flavorful fusion dish called the Camaronera style burrito. It's a mixture of a burrito and an enchilada. This is a nice fresh filet of corvina. It has nice texture to it. This is a classic sofrito, a green pepper, red pepper, raw onions, a little bit of garlic, and a lot of Latin dishes used a lot in Cuban kitchen, Caribbean style. Gonna add a nice big portion of shrimp, some salt, black pepper, and paprika. We add our fish. This is a seafood-based sauce that we make. It's our secret ingredient. Look how creamy and delicious this looks. All right, so let's build this burrito. All those good Cuban flavors. Roll this guy up. We're gonna add a little bit more of that sauce on top. Monterey Jack and Cheddar. Torch it. Creamy and cheesy and full of fresh seafood. This is a shrimp concentrate that we add on top. And this is how you do a burrito, camaronera style. Oh. The shrimp is really tender, really fresh. It's sort of something that's gonna fill you up and a little siesta is probably a good idea. Not like any other burrito I've ever tasted. I mean, it's so fresh, you just can't beat it. It tastes like something totally different. It's not Mexican. It's like its own flair, which is something you find in Miami, a mix of so many different things. Fusion food is fun, but Cuban classics still swim on the menu. One of their top sellers is a sandwich straight from the sea, the pan con minuta. Wait, is that a tail? What do our customers say when they see our sandwich? They see a tail on it. What is this? 
This is the menu. Freshly caught yellowtail snapper. We prejudice this in a lemon juice and garlic and salt. Then a double dip, flour, and a batter as bright as the sun. It's just flour, water, and a little bit of food coloring in it. It gives it that double breading. It goes into the fryer for five, seven minutes and it, until it's nice and crispy. These are all freshly caught. We fillet them daily, leave the tail on. Keep the tail on, it makes it unique. If you see a tail on it, you know that it's a real fish. We get the fresh bun. One of our neighbors right across the street does our breads for us on a daily basis. One neighbor helps another. He finishes it with raw onion, ketchup, and tartar sauce. And here you have your panco minuta sandwich, a little bit of Cuba right here in Miami. Delicious. It's really crispy, and inside it's really soft. The thing I love about the fried food here is it doesn't taste fried. You taste the fish in there. The freshness of the product, it's like the boats are right outside the door. You just feel that way. Delicious. Whether you're in the mood for a Cuban classic or some flavor fusion, the seafood specialists at La Camaronera are like part of the family. Being able to see our family grow and where we came from as a family and continue to be a landmark here in the city is very rewarding. Spicy seafood is sure to put a smile on your face. And drinks help too. I love beer and I love fish tacos. You can get both south of the border style in Seattle. I love the fish tacos. The batter is what's supreme. It all just pops on the plate. For seafood with a south of the border flair, we're going north and west to Seattle at a waterside watering hole called Little Water Cantina. <laughs> Perched on a patio overlooking Lake Union, it's soaked in Seattle's DIY spirit. We're located in East Lake. It used to be a very hippie sort of area in the 60s with a lot of houseboats that are around here. We use a lot of reclaimed materials, including 800 old tequila bottles that I salvaged from the dumpsters from other Mexican restaurants around Seattle. The restaurant design actually echoes the food, which is we have a lot of rustic influence, but we kind of do our own modern twist on things, and we think it works. You can't expect a Seattle spot to sing the same old song when it comes to cuisine. We kind of call it Seattle Mexican food. We use a lot of things like local proteins and even local vegetation, like our microgreens, as much as possible. It's in tandem with those exotic ingredients that make Mexican food so unique. We take the authentic roots very seriously, but we also like to you know, play around because people seem to really get it after a while and take chances on it. And people don't have to worry. They can still get their tacos and guac. They sure can. Wash down with one of their 10 different margaritas. To me, it doesn't get any better than having cold margaritas, nice fish tacos out on a patio, and that's why we're here. Oh, yes, it is. Shannon's fish tacos are famous. I love fish tacos. I grew up eating them in Southern California. So this is our special version of it. We have a very unique blend for our beer batter. Rice flour gives us that fluffiness that you would find in a lot of Japanese cuisine. We use masa as kind of an homage to the tortilla. And then uh, cornmeal gives it this like density and structure that's awesome. Our chili mixture has a blend of cumin and coriander, guajillo and ancho chilies. We add that for a little more flavor. We add beer because this is a beer city. And it adds a little more structure too, bubbles, and makes it nice and light. I love beer and I love fish tacos. And then we take our cod, we dredge it in a little bit of flour. Flour helps the batter stick to it. We've got nice thick coating on here. Oil's at 350. We just hold it in here for a second until it starts to fry the beer. The bubbles start to create air pockets in the batter so it gets nice and fluffy. Our fish is nice and golden brown, ready to go. It goes from the hot oil to warm tortillas and gets cool, colorful toppings. Shredded cabbage, very traditional Mexican topping for tacos. A nice crisp freshness. Pickled red onions, another classic topping. Adds nice acidity and crunch. And then also a little mango salsa. Add that nice fresh tropical flavor out on the patio. Looks like the sunset. And then we add some avocado crema. And some microgreens grown right here in Seattle. 
And what goes better with fish tacos than a little rice and beans? Nothing better than Little Water Cantina's Baja fish tacos. It's awesome. This happens to be the fish taco, and it's disappearing kind of quickly because it's quite good. I love it. The batter, the crispness was supreme. It reminded me of like fish and chips I would have in London. The cod was just amazing. Felt like it was caught this morning. Delicious. It tasted really fresh. <laughs> the fish is amazing, but also the produce that goes with it. Yellows with the mango, the purple onions, the cabbage, it all just pops on the plate. It's beautiful. The fish tacos are an homage to Baja, but nothing says Seattle seafood like big, briny mussels. We're going to take a little bit of lard and add garlic. Get that sizzling. Now we're going to start adding our mussels, our local panko of mussels. Normally, you would have maybe white wine, but of course, we're Mexican restaurants. So we're going to add a little tequila. He adds fish stock and three chili sauce and lets the mussels soak up those smoky, spicy flavors. All right, so we're all done. These guys are all opened. They go to Gallo, a little micro cilantro. Fresh local produce combined with awesome Mexican ingredients. It doesn't get any better than this. You can get mussels at a lot of different restaurants, but these flavors together, you don't see a lot of places. It's really special. There's a spiciness to them, which I like, especially with this bread. Everything goes down well, because you can soak it up after it's all over. I'm a big muscle guy, and uh, these are some of my favorites. Mexican spices and Seattle seafood. At Little Water Cantina, they're a winning combination. The food is delicious. You have wonderful views of Lake Union. If you come here on a summer evening, the sunsets are gorgeous. I, I can't think of a better place to be on a beautiful afternoon. And the margaritas don't hurt. Unless you try all 10, that's going to hurt. Time to steer this ship into port. Whether you're a fan of fried fish, spicy steamed crabs, shrimp with sauce, or lobster in any form, we can all agree, there's an ocean of amazing seafood out there.